It's official. Hillary Rodham Clinton will be the nominee for the Democrat Party, thus making history the first woman to be nominated from one of the two major parties. What can I say? I've got a lot to say. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. It is a major historical landmark. It just is. A woman has been nominated to the presidency from one of our two major parties. There have been other women before who have run, but none of them had the actual chance to become the presidency given our predominantly two-party system. So, for those who have followed the plight of suffragettes, women voters, look, look back at our history. There was a day when women could not vote. There was a time when someone like Susan B. Anthony was actually arrested for attempting to vote. Now, a woman is the standard bearer for the Democrat Party for the presidency. You just have to admit it is a historic moment. Here's the issue. Does being a female or a male qualify someone to be the president of the United States? I don't think so. And I don't think you think so. If you're trying to just have a little box that you check off, like, oh, look, we had our first Northern president. We had our first Southern president. We had our first African-American president. Now let's have our first woman president. Then I hope that you forget to vote. I really do. I hope that you actually forget to vote on election day, because if you think that this is a check off the box, that we're looking to fill some quota, for the presidency, then I don't trust your intellect <laughs> to be able to cast a vote intelligently. I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult you. The issue is not the gender. The issue is the content. The content, the policy that this person brings. So while I have to, being born and raised in a family of feminists, I have to genetically give credit to the country for getting to the place where we have nominated a woman to be president in one of our two major parties, that's as far as I can go. Now, if the female had been Sarah Palin, boy, oh boy, I would trudge through four foot of snow to help that woman become the president. Based upon policy, the president as the chief executive of this country is based the, 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 the purpose you have someone there is the direction that they will take the country based upon their policy. Now, I have to tell you that Hillary is insanely popular around the world. Can you put that graphic up for me? Look, look at this. 53, 57% of the people that were polled in 25 top nations want Hillary to be the president, 57 compared to, fifth for, to 13 for Donald Trump. <laughs> Guess what her polling numbers were in Mexico? 88% Trump, 1%. If somebody wanted to elect the president of Mexico, Hillary would be awesome. If someone wanted to elect the president of Europe, Hillary would be awesome. <laughs> By the way, did you see the only two nations that Trump won in outside of America? I'm, I'm still trying to process this. It was China and Russia. China and Russia, the people polled there, both favored Trump over Hillary. My gut on that, and I could be totally wrong, is that they're either looking for someone who they can really negotiate with and sit down and have respect for, sit, uh, or they're just so predisposed to a strong man 
to somebody who is a little bit on the authoritarian side that Donald Trump appeals to them. And Hillary is anything but that, except when she's crossed. So we, we now have made history and the news cycle for the next couple of days is going to be about Hillary, the standard bearer, the first woman president, blah, blah, blah. They'll do puff pieces about her childhood and about the Rodham family and about her being a young lawyer who served on the Watergate committee. But it's a honeymoon that is going to be very quick, people. Donald Trump can take a breath for a couple of days. They won't be pounding on him, but he can get ready to pound on Hillary. I'll be right back. If you own a business and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seeing in possibly in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. Is Donald Trump a racist? Are you a racist? Am I a racist? My gut is that there is so much poppycock, deceit, and browbeating going on discussing the term or the accusation, I should say, of being racist that it defies the imagination and is rife with hypocrisy. As you've probably heard, Donald Trump is being criticized and rebuked for racist comments concerning this man, Judge Gonzalo Curiel. He is a Hispanic judge who is presiding over one of the Trump University cases. He has been, according to Mr. Trump, very unfair. And Trump's assertion is because he's Hispanic and he hates Trump's policies regarding a wall, that he is being unfair to Trump. Trump is therefore being called a racist. Do you believe that someone who points out the connection of an individual to a certain ethnic group or to a certain uh, country of origin, that that person is by definition a racist? Well, interestingly enough, this judge is a member of La Raza the San Diego La Raza. What does La Raza mean? It means, and I'm, like, I'm not making this up, the race. He's a member of the race, <laughs> La Raza of San Diego. It's an attorney's group made up of, you guessed it, Hispanic attorneys. So if you get together with a group of people and then someone says that group of people has an agenda that's against me because I'm not one of them. Is that unreasonable? In other words, if you have the African American caucus or the black caucus in Congress, what are they caucusing for? Black issues. Black issues by definition might mean non-white issues. So are the blacks being racist? So when Black Lives Matter cries Black Lives Matter and then they rebuke people who say all lives matter or white lives matter, are Black Lives Matter being racist? Well, you can't have it both ways. I'm gonna let you answer the question. If they're racist, then it's okay to be racist because the, the media are making Black Lives Matter out to be heroes. Or is it just possible, is it just possible that, that there's a political agenda behind using the club to beat someone into submission by saying they're racist. If you're, if you're losing a debate, just yell out, you're racist. 
to the to your to your to the person who's beating you. Just yell it out. Accuse them of being racist. I have had it happen to me on many occasions. Two of my adopted children are of African American descent. Okay, and people who did not know this have accused me <laughs> of being racist, and then they have egg on their face because they look oh mm, stupid. They're ignorant. They just shot from the hip by calling someone racist, not realizing how idiotic it made them look. But I digress. If someone is pro-abortion, show this picture. This is a picture of me being sentenced in 1994 to five months in federal prison. The man to the right in the image is the late federal judge Robert Ward. Seated at the table is Sandy Cohen. He was a special prosecutor and the Attorney General for the state of New York at that time, Robert Abrams. Abrams hated my guts. All three of them were hardcore pro-aborts, maniacal pro-aborts. So if I said I could not get a fair trial because all of these men are maniacal pro-aborts, they have a political agenda which skews their understanding of justice. At that point, am I a racist? And coincidentally, I think, I could be wrong, but I think that they were all of Jewish descent. So now am I an anti-Semite? Because I said, I can't get a fair trial because of the political agenda of Judge Robert Ward. He actually came down to watch one of our sit-ins. He was, he was a witness to the events that he was coming after me for. In, in, in contempt. And if you're a witness to something and you're a judge, you're supposed to recuse yourself. He refused to recuse himself. I've got to take a break. I'll be right back. But I want you to see, maybe most of us are racist. In fact, you know what? I think all of us are racist. We just substituted that word for a different word. What do you think that word is? Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a 10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a 50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we want to be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support. People accuse other people of being racist, but it's really the new word. What was the old word? I'm old enough to remember the old word. Do you remember it? Prejudice or prejudiced. And that's also a legal term. If a judge is prejudiced or prejudicial in his rulings, he can be overturned on appeal or he can be asked to take himself out of a case. Okay, it's another word for biased. Now. We don't hear anyone talk about prejudice anymore. It's always racist. They go right to racist because I think that it started to just wear thin on people. And so now they're using the new word. But the last I heard, Hispanics were not a race. Okay? Donald Trump is talking about a country of origin and an ethnic, not a racial, an ethnic background. There's only one race, people. There's only one race, the human race. We all come from two parents. That's it, okay? There's only one race. So I have to read to you. I want to read to you. This is actually funny. Turn in your Bible, if you would, to Titus chapter 1. Listen to these words. One of the Crete's own prophets has said, 
Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. This saying is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths or to the merely human commands of those who reject the truth. By the way, that was from the Cretan philosopher Epimenides. So here we have Paul quoting a Greek philosopher who said that the Cretans are always, what's the line again? Liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. Now that sounds prejudicial to me. That sounds racist. But, you know, take out the word Cretans and put any other, you know, white people are always lazy. What is it? White people are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. If someone said that, they would be, and then Paul goes on to say, the saying is true. So rebuke them sharply. This is talking about a group of Greeks, people, the island of Crete, okay, part of Greece. And he's quoting a Greek poet who makes an overarching statement. Clearly not all of the Cretes were liars and lazy gluttons. Clearly they all weren't, okay? But the saying is true. That's what Paul said. The saying is true. What does that mean? It means that Paul the Apostle actually recognized that at times you can make an overarching statement like the Japanese are really good at math. Now, do you really believe that all Japanese are really good at math? I, I just don't think so. But have you ever seen those competitions where they use those balls? Put that up on the screen. That's so incredible how fast they can add using that thing. Or if you look at how many engineers come of Japanese descent. And why is it? Well, I would bet that it's cultural. I don't think that there's anything about their physique that makes them better mathematicians. I'm certain that it has something to do with their culture and with the discipline of parents passed down to children passed, who grow up who pass it down to their children, and it becomes a part of their culture. If you say all Italians are great cooks, is that true? No, of course it's not true. But I come from an Italian family where all of them were great cooks. <laughs> Man, I love Italian food, right? All right, so I'm using compliments to show the inverse. If I said all blank were bad cooks, clearly that's not true. But if a certain group of people really don't care much about food, ah, English food, have you ever had English food? It's so bland. It's so bland. Now, if I said English, the English are such bad cooks. Well, but if I meant by that, they make such bland food. Am I being prejudiced? Am I being racist? No. If Donald Trump says that that judge, because he's Hispanic and because he belongs to a lawyer's firm and a group that have contributed to, to give money to Hillary and Bill Clinton to make speeches, the group that he's a part of if, if, if the World Net Daily uh, story is true, gave $675,000 to the Clintons, okay? To make speeches. There's their speech revenue again. So is Donald Trump a racist because he says, I can't get a fair trial from this guy because he's of Hispanic origin. He's part of the race, a racist Hispanic group, if you want to use their word. He's a part of the race, la raza, and he he hates my politics about building a wall on the southern border. And now that I'm the Republican nominee, he's trying to grind me in this civil trial to make me look bad to help so that I will lose the election. Does that make Donald Trump a racist? It's stupid to say that it makes him a racist. It's actually stupid. It's ignorant. But I'm going to go a step further. When someone like Paul Ryan or Jeb Bush that says, oh, there's, there's, there's no place for racism in this race. Oh, come on, Jeb. Come on, Paul. What kind of little schoolgirl babies are you? Really and truly? Really and truly? Are you that enslaved to the fear of the New York Times and the Washington Post? Grow up. Grow up and admit, admit that you look at certain people groups and have certain behavior patterns that are in those groups and you're worried. I'll, I'll end with this. Jesse Jackson said that when he's walking down the streets of Washington, D.C., and he hears footsteps coming up behind him in the night. He's relieved when he turns around and sees that it's not black men. 
that it's not black men. In other words, it's white men. Oh, he said because it, it said he said it pained him because he knows statistically that one in four young black men at that time were in trouble with the law. And there was a good chance in D.C. that he was going to get mugged. All right. Was he racist for saying that? Now, if I said it, if I said I'm walking down the street at night in Washington, D.C., and I hear footsteps behind me and I turn around and I see that it's not young black men and I'm relieved, am I racist to say it? Is the color of someone's skin the barometer for what they can and cannot say about any ethnic subdivision of the human race? If so, then the insane are in charge, in charge of the asylum. You've got to be crazy to think that. You've got to be stupid. You have to be ignorant. You have to be foolish. And you have to have a political agenda that you want to browbeat people into silence over other issues. That's, the, that's what's really going on here, people. To browbeat people into silence over other social issues using the race, not card. It's not a race card. It's a, it's a bludgeon. It's a, it's a nightstick, using the race nightstick to get someone to go along. And Donald Trump, God bless him, won't go along. And I won't go along, all right? I won't go along. I don't think for a second that Donald Trump can get a fair trial before this man, any more than I could have gotten a fair trial before Judge Robert Ward because of Ward's politics and because of this man's politics and the group that he's a part of. He should recuse himself if anyone is a racist using their stupid definition it's probably this judge. I want to invite you to go to our website. Almost every book that I have ever written is available as a PDF online for free. We have a ton of products, training materials, tools that are available for you for free. All we ask for is that you give us your email address. That's it. So that we can stay in touch with you and yes, from time to time, ask you to support this work. So I'm inviting you, go to the, the website. Now for those of you who say, well, I, I don't want a PDF, I want a real book. You can get one of my books. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling and then give whatever gift you want. And if you can't afford anything, we'll send you the book for free. Just pay shipping and handling. Why are we doing all this? Because we want to change the direction of the country and we need to raise up a fresh generation of warriors to do that. That's why we have this tool. I invite you, go to the website, see for yourself. If you are enjoying the show and you have a business and you would like to be a sponsor of the program, I ask you to contact us with the, uh, at the email address that you see there on your screen. We are always looking for sponsors. Could be that you have something to sell, a service to offer, and we could use the help and you could use the exposure. We're on over 100 cities in the country and the rates are really good. One other quick housekeeping item. We are going to be releasing soon the long-awaited, uh, almost two years in production, What Would Mohammed Do? The Shadow of the Sword. We need help to finish the project. We still need to raise about $30,000. We're going to translate this into French, into Dutch, into German. Our intention is to release it in Belgium. I ask you to give. If you'll give $35, we'll send you the set when it's done. If you'll give $100, we'll send you four sets. If you'll give a thousand dollars, we will send you a hundred DVDs that you can distribute to your friends. This series is unlike any series that's ever been made. No one has ever connected the dots from the events of Muhammad's life to the atrocious deeds of Muslim terrorists today. So using their words, their images, their historians, we're connecting the dots from Muhammad to Muslim terrorists, showing that Muslim terrorists have not hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam. They are simply, simply mimicking the behavior of its founder. And so we are asking the question, what would Muhammad do? If you want to see that series prosper, I'm asking you for your help. Go to the website on your screen and please continue to pray for us. God bless you.